welcome back to my channel. My name is Nelly Caitlin and if this is your first time stopping by, hi, welcome. Please subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch my other videos. So in today's video, I'll be talking about how to survive studying and living abroad. And this is a question I get asked a lot because I've lived in kind of countries that no one would really expect you to go and live in. And so, yeah, people always ask me, how do you survive? How do you manage? And all that kind of stuff. So today I will be talking about it. So today's video was meant to be one video, but because I do talk too much, it ended up being too long. I ended up having an intro, background story, story time thing that was like 10 minutes long before I even got to the actual purpose of the video. So this video will be like a story time, background story thing where I'll be talking about where I was, how I got there, where I am now and how I got here. And the second video I will be talking about how to actually survive studying and living abroad and I will link that video in the description box and somewhere on this video so that you guys can go and watch it after this. And before I continue rambling and end up making this video a lot longer than it should be, let's get into it. <laughs> so for those that don't know, I went to Ukraine towards the end of 2013. I stayed there until towards the end of 2014. And after that, I came to China in December 2014. So, in Ukraine, I loved it. I loved everything about it. I loved the language, I loved the people, I loved where I was, I loved, it was amazing. I just, I don't really have complaints about Ukraine because I was only there for like almost a year and whatever, but the time that I spent there was incredible. I loved it there. I was in Eastern Ukraine in a city called Donetsk. I would go to the mall every Friday after class, have ice cream with my friends, my roommates, Abby and Abby. If you guys are watching this, I miss you guys so much. And yeah, I really, I loved Ukraine so much. I spoke the language quite well. It got to a point where people would come to me to order them cabs and people would ask me to come with them wherever they were going because I was the one who could speak Russian and <laughs> all that. Like, I miss that place, honestly. And yeah, the reason I left was because Around April or May 2014, there was a lot of just unrest in Donetsk and it was funny because I was actually in the mall on a Friday afternoon, I think this was in April or beginning of May, and my mom called me and she was like, where are you? And I'm like, I'm at the mall. And she's like, what are you doing at the mall? And I was like, I come to the mall every Friday afternoon, um, what's up? And she's like, people are dying, people are being killed, what are you doing in the mall? And I was like people are dying <laughs> where <laughs> you know it was till now I still don't understand exactly how the media and news managed to like make it seem as you know and us we, we were still going to school everything was okay it did get to a point however when we were starting to see like tanks and soldiers and stuff in the city and we're like okay towards like the end of it all my parents decided that you know what your ukraine life is over you're leaving and that's it like <laughs> till now i really just yeah but i mean their parents they worry about their child and if they don't the situation on the news was bad because we used to watch the news and be scared but then we'd remember that actually no we're here but it's like till now what, I, what what was on the news i never saw and i was in the city where it was happening but yeah i guess we're just lucky that we were kind of far from it all and I, I, I really i don't understand but yeah my parents decided that that was that and i was gonna have to move so i chose the next furthest place there was oh and i forgot to mention this in the beginning the reason i went to ukraine was because one it's far and two it was going to allow me to learn a new language and i always wanted to learn russian so i went to eastern ukraine because that's where they speak russian i would have gone to russia but i was going to have to wait a full year and i don't want to do that so I went to Ukraine and I loved it. I really, I honestly, I think that's like the fifth time I said this, but I loved it there. And but yeah, my dad called me one day and he was like, okay, you're leaving, get ready and pack as much as you can because you're probably not going back. 
that time again I was in the mall <laughs> so now I have to go home pack whatever I could and leave in time for my flight and yeah I did leave all my like classmates and sort of like all my friends and even that was in that city just kind of moved and went to a different city in the west of Ukraine and that's where they still are now and I do kind of miss it and I, I sometimes I do wish I was there with them but I'm happy here so yeah so I left Ukraine and so obviously I still wanted to be far and I was like oh well I've learned Russian now what's next so I decided I was gonna learn Chinese and I came to China I came at the end of the first semester the semester in China the semester starts in September and ends in January and then starts again in February and ends in July August that time so like I said I came and December I arrived in China on the 3rd of December in 2014 and the time I arrived the timetable for final exams was already out guys it was when people ask me what's an extreme sport going to uni when the timetable for exams is out that is an extreme sport I had to catch up with everything that the my classmates had done I had to catch up with the language I had to, there was so much and was coming to China was different from going to Ukraine because there at least some people speak English and I was there early ish I don't know things just made sense when I was there when I came here I didn't know anything I didn't know anyone I didn't know what to do I didn't know where to go I didn't know any single thing and so yeah I remember I walked into my first calculus class and they were having a test and the teacher was like, here you go. And I was like, but, and she was like, well, what do you want me to do? <laughs> and I was like, okay. But yeah, eventually I caught up and I actually ended up getting a scholarship at the end of that year because I had done so well. And obviously the semesters that came after that weren't so bad because I didn't start them when they were almost done. Apart from like school related problems, I didn't have other challenges like getting lost, being unable to speak the language and all that. But with time I began to understand where I am and I started to understand the language and things got better and I actually quite like it now, I'm used to it. It's even starting to feel like home. I've had so many strange and funny, just weird encounters ever since I came here and I will share them with you guys in another video because I don't want to end up making this like three parts but I'll do a story time one day where I just share with you guys funny, strange, interesting things that have happened since I came here. So yeah, that was the background story which was meant to be the intro for my next video. Um, but yeah, as you probably realized by now, I do talk too much. I hope you guys enjoyed this part. Please do go and watch the next part of this video, which I will link in the description box and probably somewhere um, in this video. And yeah, please do like, comment, share, and subscribe. And see you in my next video. Bye!